TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy, June edition, with your hosts Pablo Gunner, Marvin Goof, The Ambassador, and we are here to talk nerdy to you about Doctor Who. Alright, let's get into Doctor Who, which this whole season has been up and down and all over the place, right? Like, it really has in so many different ways. I mean, the 73 yards was confusing because it didn't seem like they really resolved anything. It it plays along with, with your, like, different universes and magic and, and stuff, and you feel somewhat satisfied, but then that's not the ending, so it wasn't really too satisfying, and then yeah. it was really confusing. Now, seeing the finale, I go... What did that all have to do with anything? Like, now it makes me really frustrated with that episode. I won't say that it's... it's I mean, that episode specifically, I would say it's it's worth checking out, because it wasn't a bad episode, you know? It's it, it's not a pass. Uh, but it just left too many open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. And then there was the next episode. I don't know. Um, which was Dot and Bubble, right? And that yeah. one was that one was funny. It was interesting, but here's the problem: if you're gonna do something that's already been done, you need to do it better. If you can't do it better, don't do it. Like Black Mirror has already destroyed that and done phenomenal job with it. Okay. With the whole social media futuristic, social media to the point where it's like controlling your lives. Mm. But it was just done so much better in Black Mirror. That was, yes. But I think the other layers that they added to it, which was... And I and they probably did this, too, which was economic status in the Black Mirror episode. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen that one. Mm. But And so I'm sure that was in there. So economic status, like the rich and the poor, you know, that was in there. I was kind of in denial. I'll, I'll be honest. I was in denial that it was a racial thing, right? Until I was like, oh... Yes, these people are very Caucasian. Like they are, they are very pale. All every <laughs> single, the, every single one of these rich people are very pale. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense, because like she showed up on on her bubble and she whisked him away right away. White lady showed up, she gave her her some time, and I was like, wait, this is way more messed up and nuanced than I thought. So when you like get to the ending and they're like, no, we're not going with you, and I'm like. Why, why wouldn't you, you know, at first I was like, oh, it's a rich, poor thing. And I was like, that doesn't make sense in that, oh my, that's, me it was so messed up that I was like, that's just so messed up. Yeah, and, and, and it makes you feel sadness and also the hate that he, that he, the doctor feels, right? Because the doctor changes, right? He's never been black before. So even when he was a woman, when he was a woman, that was crazy to me because he's like, I didn't have a, this problem when I was a man. You know, everyone questions me being a doctor. Or like, would, no, I'd never had this problem. And that was con consistently funny, like whatever situation they were in. They have not really been done that. Like, and even this was not in the face. It was a subtle nuance. It ended up being more powerful than it really was. Because yeah, like you said, someone has done better the social media thing. You're right. But this was more than that. And that's why that episode was so good once again though you didn't have that much of the doctor and the companion in it this is doctor who where is my doctor you know i don't want my doctors just showing up at the end even 73 yards he was there for 73 seconds it felt like you know what i mean like and then that's it it's like come on this is doctor who i get like focusing on the companion but even the companion i've always felt like the companions have showed their smarts you know donna she's like super smart and i go yeah, she does. A lot of them, they end up showing their smarts, and I go, that's why they deserve to be here with the doctor, right? Because they're problem solvers. Which I also kind of made the whole thing come full circle, which is, she really is an ordinary person. And once she fixed her ordinary life, she didn't care that much about the mysteries of the universe. Because sometimes, ordinary life is enough. You don't need to traverse other times and galaxies because... Your family's enough. Like, that gives you enough to feel complete, you know, to have that. That's enough. And so even that was, like, that was powerful in its thing. Like, the whole Sutek and, and like, the whole Egyptian it, thing. Like, it was all right, but I felt yeah, like, okay. they, were, I felt like okay. they were just trying to ram classic who in there. Yeah. Without really doing all the work. Get in my belly! Mm -hmm. Because it's a lot better when the work is done. Mm-hmm. 
And the sad thing is, seeing this stuff right now, compared to what he's done, makes you wonder, what happened, man? Mm. You, you did good stuff. We've seen really, really good stuff, yet we're getting this right now. The one that was really well done was like when he introduced like classic characters here and there mm -hmm. and then just had like a companion meet <laughs> meet up mm -hmm. to help uh prevent the not the Slovene it was another another like evil race from taking mm -hmm. over and basically you had like the former prime minister that he got removed from office mm -hmm. getting all the Doctor Who companions together to uh, give the doctor a chance to be able to win. Mm -hmm. And it was like a really cool, well done, well thought of episode where it wasn't just we're ramming a whole bunch of classic stuff together. It's a we've established how this character could get all those people together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you're keeping an eye on the doctor and you notice the doctor meets up with Sarah Jane Smith again, she's on your radar. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, other other characters as well, like they even had um, Captain Jack Harkness show up as well. Well, he wasn't physically there, but he was assisting through telecommunications. Mm -hmm. But it was cool to see all those characters meet up. And when you're doing it right, it works really well. But if you're just ramming it together, it takes away some of the moments. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like the... Last two episodes are worth watching, but I would give the rest a pass. Okay. Yeah, see, the thing is, I thought they were building up to the Toy Maker's Cabal, right? Like, yeah. the Toy Maker was the, that, that crossover, and I was like, okay, now it's going to be his creations are all coming after the Doctor. And we had one, and I was like, yeah, well, the next episodes are going to be about that, too. I thought that's what they were set, setting up. And then, or at least one of them, right? Like, at least that was going to be the finale as they were setting up one of them, you know, and maybe it was one of the toy makers, one of their characters, another one was, like, setting stuff up, and that's what it was leaving. It wasn't that. Like you said, if they would have done the setup for Sutek, I would have been like, cool. It did just feel like an old-school Tom Baker throwback randomly for no reason other than, hey, I like Tom Baker, and I like Sutek, and that's why we're going to throw him in. And the weird thing is, like, the... The companion they brought in, the former companion that's with Unit, mm -hmm. has like nothing to do with Tom Baker either. Yeah. Uh, she she actually has to do with she just showed up randomly one time. No quite no one knows how she became a companion. Mm -hmm. It was one episode that shows her as a companion in the future, but then the next season she's there, but never tells you how she got there. So she started with Colin Baker and then ended. And then left with Sylvester McCoy. Okay. So uh, Colin Baker, he's kind of forgettable. He was the one with the really crazy multicolor suit. Mm. Probably one of the worst doctors. Mm. And then uh, Sylvester McCoy, you may know him from The Hobbit as Radagast hey, Brown. Radagast, <laughs> yes. <laughs> good, really good actor. And it was a shame they didn't bring Ace back again. Because that's like the companion of Sylvester McCoy that's a little more enjoyable. Uh, she's a girl from the 80s that like, you never say what ha how, how she left the TARDIS. Mm. Because uh, she was the companion when the show was cancelled. Okay. Um, and it was a really weird dynamic that they still have never done before. She was like a daughter to him. Mm -hmm. It was like a father-daughter type relationship as a doctor and companion. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, and I think that's the thing is that there's a lot of threads here that they laid out that they could have done. And when you look back on it, this really was just focused on Ruby. Like this season really was about Ruby more than it was anything else and her emotional and her emotional stuff. Like, that's what I've seen from a lot of stuff. People said, hey, this is cla kind of classic RTD, which is to focus not so much. It focuses more on the emotional beats than anything else, right? Like, it's just kind of like whatever, and they focus on And you're like, yeah, that's true. Because even Rogue, like, they set up Rogue in the Bridgerton episode, which was hilarious and awesome, I thought. And I was like, okay, you set up this, of this uh, character, 
and now he's going to be going to find this character. It's going to be him and Ruby searching for this for this possible love interest character, at least. But you don't see more of it. And I'm like, okay, well, they can do it later. But are they going to? Because it seems like so many times they set up these things, and then they don't capitalize on them, just like, oh, the toy maker's creations are coming after you. And it was one. Because then they focused on Ruby instead. And so, yeah, it's weird because the, whole, the season as a whole, it's all over the place. Emotionally, yeah, it does hit those beats. But it is, it does have its weakness. So I cannot say that the season as a whole is a must-see. But it's definitely worth checking out as a okay. whole. Let's talk about our merch. Let's talk about our merch. I'm sporting uh, our Star Wars stuff, the Star Wars Talk Nerdy to Me, just plain. And then I got the shorts Talk Nerdy to Me. You can get that on our website. It's on sale with free shipping. Probably going to continue to be because of the fact that Acolyte is continuing into the next month. A lot of this stuff is like prototype stuff, so it's upgraded. There's better versions on our actual website. And hey, if there's anything that you want customized to you or you there anything you have any idea, just send it to us and we'll do our best to do that and see what we can get away with. Because there's some stuff we can, some stuff we can't. <laughs> you know, we push the boundaries as much as we can. <laughs> yeah, I got my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Talk Nerdy to Me shirt. Pretty awesome. I got the Halo one. The good Halo Ooh, yeah. Yes. I like it. So, yeah. Uh, and if you want any of this stuff, just request it. If it's not on the website, just hit us up, and, and we'll make it available to you and, and hook you up. Cool? So, for shout-outs, we really don't have much uh, because, um, well, I mean, all, MK Jekyll and Hyde is now at the top of that list because they're phenomenal. They reached 250 subs on their for their comics, for their online comics, and, and they're really cool and really awesome. And... and they do great stuff. I know they're uh, a parent as well. And so it's, it's great conversing with them and just all their posts are great. The Pesky Gremlins, they have a new website and they have like new comics, web comics out too that look fun and enjoyable. And, and they always help out with their stuff. Eric Lopez, that guy's always a G. Like he's the best on, on Twitter mm -hmm. and retweeting our stuff as well as the podcast that never dies or what, what is it? The podcast that wouldn't die? The podcast that wouldn't yeah, die. Yeah, the podcast yes. that wouldn't die. They're always awesome too. Check them all out. I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, just make sure to like and subscribe. Talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth. Keep it nerdy, y'all.